right, so I have this thing, which is a 3D printer. It's kind of cool, actually. It wasn't very expensive, and the um, XY is taken care of by the bed moving and by this arm moving in and out, and that takes care of the XY. And then this section moves up and down for the Z position, so it doesn't print a huge amount, uh, but it is really kind of cute and wasn't that expensive. But one problem with um, this, obviously, is it getting to stick to the bed and the cooling problems once it comes out. And what you do about that really is make a heated bed. Now you can buy heated beds of various qualities and at various prices. So the simple sort of bendable rubber ones are kind of 10 or 15 pounds. And then the more durable flatter ones can go up to a couple of hundred pounds actually if they include all the electronics. But the basic one itself is around about 40 or 50 pounds. So there's this huge variety of pricing. And that pricing variety comes from the added benefit that you have. Because obviously what you're looking for when you're looking at a 3D printer is a very flat bed. Uh, and if you have something that's bendable rubber, it relies on the original bed and sticking it to that. And, and that, that is actually nice and true. And it, it isn't often so. The more expensive ones use something like this. This is a bit of aluminium. It's three millimeters thick and it's a lovely bit of aluminium plate. And I'm not sure what um, grade of aluminium that is. So it's going to be a, probably a little bit flexible. You can get thicker aluminium, like a five millimeter thickness, and different grades of it, so you get a relatively um, stiff and brittle aluminium that won't bend very well, and if you have that top machined, you'll have a beautiful flat bed to attach to your printer and then heat. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this stock to make a bed for this printer. But what we're gonna do with this is identical if you make it on rubber, if you make it on thicker aluminium, if you make it on a different aluminium grade, it's still the same method that we're going to be using to do this. And to do this, we're going to use a method that I explored in earlier videos, where we take the bare metal and we coat it with a heat-resistive uh, insulating paint. Uh, and this is stove enamel. It's good to up to 650 degrees centigrade. So if we apply a coat of stove enamel to that, that will insulate the metal plate from the electronics that I'm going to put on there. And what we're going to do is a resistive heater made from our conductive ink. Now this is a graphene based conductive ink available on the shop and it has some really uh, well, awesome qualities actually. I've been using it for all kinds of things and I made an oven out of this in a previous video and that's what put me in mind of this hot plate. We're going to use those components to make a resistive heating bed. The quality of the bed is going to be fixed by the material that you choose to make it from. So if you use 5 aluminum, uh, five millimeter aluminium of a high grade that's had the surface milled, you're going to get a beautiful bed. If you uh, are willing to spend £200 on it, that is. If you want to spend slightly less, you can get a nice grade of relatively flat aluminium, which is what this is at three millimeters thick, so it resists bending, uh, and of unknown grade, but it's a nice bit of metal. And that was, um, I think that was £8.50 actually for that. And if you really don't care, you can get a bit of plastic, paint the bottom, uh, bottom of the plastic and stick it on there and rely on the bed, and that's going to cost you about 50 pence or so. So there's a huge range of variety of the material you can make the bed from, depending on what it is that you want to achieve. Now, we're going to make it from this bit of aluminium. We're going to be putting it here. And on here, we have four little bolts that fix this bed to the travel arms. And those are the bolts that we're going to, bolt positions rather, that we're going to transfer onto the aluminium so that we can bolt the aluminium on here. Now, I did think about cutting that aluminium down to the same width of the bed, but actually it's a beautiful bit of aluminium, so I'm actually just going to fasten it on there and use that entire aluminium sheet. Obviously, if you're making one, you would cut the aluminium to the size that you wanted or order it cut to the size that you wanted. Again, the procedure is going to be exactly the same. So now when we get our bit of aluminium, and um, it should come, a nice plastic bit on there, and a bare bit on there, and that has been handled, and you just saw me do it. That has been handled many, many times. So the first thing to do is to give it a wash with acetone. Take a little bit of a rag, oops, and give it a wipe over quite rigorously with your acetone to clean all of the grease, handling grease, machine grease, storage muck, off of the first surface of the aluminium. Now I've obviously done that. The next thing to do is to take a very fine grade of wet and dry paper, and this is a P1200 um, grade, and go over the surface with a fine grade. That gives it a bit of 
tooth so that the pence can actually adhere to it quite well. And then after you've done that, another clean with the acetone. And when you've done that, avoid touching it because you have now got a beautifully clean, grease-free surface that's got a bit of tooth to apply the pens to. And that whole thing, like I said, is going to go on there. Now we need to transfer the bolt marks from here to here. And that's going to depend on your bed. Just measure everything carefully and get those bolt marks transferred onto the surface. Now remember, it's going to fit that way down. And you're working on it that way. So remember to mirror the transfer positions of your bolts. Because one thing that we need to do is cover those bolt positions with a little sticky dot. So this will prevent me putting paint on those bolt positions because I don't want the heater to come through on those bolt positions so that I'm quite happy to drill through them later when I want to fix it to the bed without having to worry that I'm shorting out my heater. So I've applied those bolts there. Now that surface is going to want to be painted, but I don't necessarily want to paint to the edge. I don't want to paint the whole surface. So I put a bit of masking tape on it to whatever position you actually want that to be painted to. And I can see I'm going to have to just move those position markers for a second. I got these dots incidentally from a craft store so I've got a ton of these dots that I can use. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is spray it with three coats of this stuff. You need to spray it, let it dry, spray it, let it dry. And it needs to be really tough so it'll dry in about an hour but you need to give it about 24 hours. So all we're gonna do is spray this and then leave it for 24 hours. Now, it is, uh, actually I love the smell, it smells of pears, but people say, hey, do it outside, do it in a uh, ventilation, wear a mask, all that sort of stuff. It's a your own cognizance, really. If you're making a ton of these things, sure. If you're gonna make one or two, you're probably going overkill doing it in an entire spray booth, but up to you. But you just spray an even coat onto the surface of your metal. There we go, and we give that some time to dry. Hi, so this is the next day, so it's had a nice time to dry, and there it is, our beautifully coated aluminium sheet with its stove enamel. Now, I've got to attach um, a connection point to this, and because I'm going to take this up to quite a high temperature, uh, I mean, when I'm using it, if I use it on a printer, the temperature is relatively low. You're only talking about 200 degrees at most. Uh, but I want to test this in other applications as well, so I'm, I plan on taking this quite high. And in order to do that, what I've got here to attach it is a rather nice ceramic block. And um, this will insulate against the heat transfer and against the contact with the metal. So that's what I'm going to use to make my wire contacts. And it's going to sit about there. If we have a look at the um, 3D printer. then it doesn't matter that that's going to sit there. Because remember, that'll be facing down, because it'll sit here, and the little overhang where the connector is will be underneath the plate with plenty of overhang. 
Now I did look at other 3D printers and we have a very similar situation. If we have a small overhang with a downward projection, then it doesn't get in the way of the mechanism. So you'd have to place this where it's not going to get in the way of the mechanism of the forward, backward or side to side movement that you're going to have. So having an overhang isn't an issue as long as you think about where your printer is and where that overhang is going to go. Now in order to get there, what I've got is this rather nice stuff which is um, yeah, five millimeter copper tape. So it's a beautiful five millimeter copper tape and I'm going to attach it onto there and then bring it to that contact point there. And I can do that by putting a little fold in it, bring it there, another little fold and then into there. Now it's got a glue on this side so I want to make that slightly longer so that I can fold it over copper against copper and then I can just put the copper into the block here. So that block is going to go about halfway, and I'm going to make sure it's halfway because I want it all to be nice and neat. And this is 300, so halfway is 1500. It's going to be that. That block is uh, 30, 34 millimeters, so it's 1517 millimeters either side. So there and there. So that's where my block is going to sit. Just there. So this copper tape needs to go from here, more or less, bend and down there. So I'm going to do that and then show you when I've done it. Okay, so there we go. There's the copper strips on and they're brought close together so that you can go straight into that ceramic block. A uh, little bit fiddly to do that, but worth the effort because it certainly solves any soldering issues that you might have. Now this thin copper tape has a glue on it and obviously that glue isn't going to stand up to the heat but we're about to paint loads of paint layers on that and that will act as a heat resistive glue on the edges of the copper so even though the little bit of glue that will be left won't actually hold the rest of it is such a large surface area with a heat resistive glue that it'll be just fine. Now here between these two strips is where we're going to paint the um, ink, the conductive ink because that's our heating area Obviously we want a nice neat job, so mask off the area that you don't want to paint. And you can see that I'm just outside of the copper strips, because I'm going to paint over the copper strips. And that's where we're going to apply our heat ink. Now, this paint is a plastic surface. So we use that trick that I've been pointing out a lot in the other videos, put a little bit on and give it a wiper over so that you get the adhesion to the surface. If you don't do that, then the air paint will bubble up. It, it won't actually um, adhere firmly. And as you can see, it's quite a nice sort of graphene, graphite color already. And that will make the next layers um, firmly attached to that paint layer. So that all we have to do when that's had a chance to dry is paint a layer of the resistive ink. Now, the thicker the ink, then the less resistive it's going to be. So if you're using 24 volts, two coats will be fine. If you want to use 12 volts, three coats will be fine. If you want to experiment with putting more coats on to see what kind of heat you can get for very low draws, then put more coats on because we're putting on an aluminium surface. So it's actually quite a stable surface. And in paint terms, we can put a fairly thick coat on there. And as you can see that rubbing with the primer coat that we just did, make sure that we get a lovely paint coat on there, which is what we want. We want a nice and even paint coat on there. 
and all we have to do is let that dry. So there it is nice and dry. Now we peel off the masking tape, just the inner layer, not the outer layer. So peel off the stuff. There we go. Peel off the stuff that was masking the um, area that you wanted to paint the conductive paint on. Okay, because now what we're going to do is give that another coating of the stove enamel over the area that we've just painted. So I'm just masking off the tails of my copper uh, and now I'm going to spray paint this area. Making sure there's no dust on it. And we give that three coats. So here's the paint job finished. What we're going to do now is just remove the strips and attach the connecting block and then we're ready to go. Okay, so we've got a little bit of uh, cleaning up to do. We've got to attach the block to here, which I'm just going to drill through to attach, and then to put those into there. So I'm going to do that, and when I've done that, I'll get back to you. Okay, so here it is on test. It's been running for eight minutes, and here's the plate here. I'm not going to actually touch it, because as you can see on the reader, it's now at 104 degrees centigrade. There's the temperature sensor, and it's going through this meter, because I was asked to display the temperature readings, and I thought that was really quite fair, actually. So I've got to set this up so that you can actually see what the temperature is. It's drawing 32 volts at 8 amps. That makes it about 256 watts as a heater. I did try it at 12 volts, and it... <laughs> kind of moved it from room temperature a few degrees. 24 volts uh, works, but it's quite slow. It took about 30 minutes to get up to temperature. Here at 32 volts, then we've had um, nearly 9 minutes and we're getting quite high. Uh, we can put that up to 48 volts, so I guess one way of uh, controlling the speed at which this heats is to pump the voltage through. You want to keep it less than 50 volts because those are the low voltage regulations. Uh, I quite like this at 32 volts, but clearly you can arrange whatever you can arrange to, to actually heat that. But really what we're seeing here is that this heating bed is uh, working absolutely a treat. We're now at 106. I'm going to turn it up to uh, 48 volts. Okay, so we've got 5.4. So now that's around about a uh, 500, uh, yeah, 500 watt heater. And you can see the temperature actually is shooting up here. We're now at 114. 16. So ideally this wants to be about 120 degrees.
and there we go 120 degrees centigrade so it hits 120 degrees centigrade quite easily on uh, 48 volts it will get there on 32 volts it'll take ages on 24 volts and at 12 volts it's not going to work at all uh, just because it can't get the temperature up really when you consider what this is that makes a lot of sense I mean it's a big sheet of aluminium that's radiating heat out and although it's taking the energy it can't raise that temperature above its losses for its input and so it can't really get that high so I'm going to leave this for a little while and we'll see how high that goes so it's been 20 minutes and that's 178 degrees so I think that's actually plenty hot enough in that time uh, so I'm going to call a halt there I'll probably test to see how actually high it can go some of the time but for that actually that's really toasty for that to get to that temperature is I think pretty impressive so there you go start to finish how to build a 3d printer heating bed to bolt onto one of these now obviously there's quite a lot of variety in those so you'd have to uh, measure the bed size that you want and where the fixings are and remember mark out the fixing <laughs> this incidentally is still on it's 181 degrees now it's really toasty i can just feel the heat wafting up from there now i use three millimeter aluminium but there are a fair few options and this is quite a nice one i think this is a magnesium printing plate it comes really quite flat because you're going to print from it obviously it's about um seven millimeters thick uh, and it's already coated on this side with an insulating coating so you would just apply it straight on so this would be quite a nice material but you want something that's uh, relatively hard and inflexible with a level surface on the reverse of it if it isn't uh, coated in insulating coating then what we did was coat it with an insulating coating then paint on your heater and then pick your voltage supply that allows you to heat that to a reasonable amount of time now 30 by 30 is quite a large plate uh, and it's three millimeters thick so it represents a fairly substantial thermal mass so uh, it got, took a while to get up there if I turn it on it'll take a while to get back down again uh, actually when I say a while I think it was like 10 minutes something like that it took uh, 20 minutes to get up to 180 um, and these are the basic things to remember otherwise it's really quite an easy job to use this stuff our conductive ink to do something like a 3D printer heating bed. Anyway, I hope that was of interest to you and thank you very much for watching.